Arthur, what's this all about? What, 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 what's going on here? He was questioning your finances, and you got rather fragrant with him, didn't you? I mean, he's a hater. He's a no-coiner. He's been he's bashed. A no-coiner. A no-coiner. Is that the new pejorative way, word for people who it's don't believe? Someone it. who doesn't have any Bitcoin and watched the price rocket in their face over the past few years. So, it's what? A bit harsh, isn't it? I think so, <laughs> but I think it's true. <laughs> okay. Go on. I thought, well, tell us. I mean, he's saying that you guys are basically living on air. That our volumes are fake, that there's no real market action going on, and we beg to differ. That there's actually real trading going on. We did $60 billion, our highest 24-hour um, trading record. Did about a trillion U.S. dollars over the past year. So the trading volumes speak for themselves. There's something going on here in crypto, and the price action and volumes speak for it. Well, absolutely. We look at Bitcoin itself, which is the one which everybody looks at, and you see how much it's gone up almost parabolically. What's been behind that in your view? Well, we went down from 20,000 to about 3,000 over the past 18 months, and this is sort of the, the rebound. So it took us two and a half months or so to go from 3,000 to 10,000. In 2017, we started off the year at 1,000, and by November we were at 10,000. So this is sort of like a high water mark for a lot of investors. And as they've seen the price go from 10,000 to almost 14,000 in the span of a few trading days and back down to almost 10,000. Yes, but there must have been something behind it. I mean, is it institutions? What is it? Who's driving it? Because when you look at volumes, it's actually the weekends where we see volumes actually increase, which gives you the idea that it's probably retail. I think this is still a retail-led phenomenon. The, the sentiment is back. There's been positive developments. You have the Facebook, Libra, stablecoin, which some people think will bring, bring a few billion people into this digital payments ecosystem. That's very bullish. You also just have a rebound, and it took two years for people to repair their balance sheets, and now they're back trading crypto. Okay. Why would you invest in a cryptocurrency? I think it's a call option. So either, say, Bitcoin is going to be worth zero or a lot of money in, say, a decade. So your premium is essentially just the price of Bitcoin today. So take a very, very small amount of money that you are comfortable with losing, stash it away, invest into Bitcoin, and it's either worth nothing or uh, you're going to have a nice return when you look back in a decade. So it's definitely prudent for investors from a volatility and risk-return risk return perspective. Okay. I mean... Like gold, there is no intrinsic value, is there, to a Bitcoin, in essence. It's how much it costs to mine it, but that's already disappears. But the thing is, gold has been a, a store of value for thousands of years. Bitcoin's only been around a few. So what? why would I put it in Bitcoin and not into gold, let's say? Well, gold is analog, right? If you want to transport a million U.S. dollars worth of gold, that's very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> now, with uh, a, a wallet or a hardware wallet, you could essentially, with a USB drive, transport a vast amount of wealth anywhere you go. And if we're really moving into a digital economy, then the way we store wealth, or the hard asset, if you will, that is pricing wealth, must change. And I think Bitcoin could be that asset. Okay, it could be. Of course, exactly. Yeah, that, that, that the jury's out. But it, it's got derivatives now, hasn't it? I mean, you've got uh, futures on this. You've also got more sophisticated zero coupon uh, Bitcoin bonds, and uh, uh, that's what it's all about here. And maybe sort of all coin swaps as well. Now, tell us all about these things. They're very exciting. So we obviously a derivatives trading platform. Our most popular product is a derivative that we created, a perpetual swap. It's essentially a leveraged derivative that doesn't have any expiry date and mimics, mimics margin trading. And this product trades about, I don't know, 5 to 10 billion U.S. dollars per day notional. It's the most liquid trading product for crypto. We also have other altcoin products where, say, Ethereum, EOS, Tron, all these different altcoins, we allow people to trade those on leverage as well. And so we have a full product suite of these uh, derivatives, and something that we're really keen on working on is fixed income. So in the next few weeks, uh, we'll be revealing that we have launched the first um, Bitcoin zero-coupon bond in the form of an ISDA loan with a few um, counterparties that we've identified because we want to start a market where people can actually earn yield on their Bitcoin by investing and loaning Bitcoin to some of the most stable companies in the space. What are the biggest risks going ahead, though, for a trading platform such as yours? Obviously, we hold other people's Bitcoin. Uh, if we get hacked, traders can lose their collateral. And that's the same with, with any exchange. And we always caution traders, only hold Bitcoin or other crypto assets in the amount that you're actually going to trade with on an exchange. The purpose of Bitcoin and these crypto assets is to become your own financial institution and custody your own assets. Don't leave them on the exchange if you don't need them. Quickly, 
what do you make of Facebook's idea of Libra at the moment? It's a long way off. Yet. I think it will destroy commercial and central banks.